Please welcome Songmei Kim, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, MIT, and Director, Biomimetic Robotics Laboratory. All right, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so glad to have this opportunity to share what I've been thinking about the last five, six years. I'm teaching uh, robotics at MIT been, and also running research. Ignore the topic, the title. Title doesn't mean anything to you at this point. <laughs> Hopefully, after my talk, it might mean something to you. So let's jump into it. Um, I don't want to take too much time to talk about how much IT technology changes us. You know, our kids, you know, uh, it's changing our how brain wiring and so on. But if you think about this, pause a moment, all these AI technologies stuck in this text, image, sound space, which is virtual. Think about all these, most, there are a lot of good technologies that help us, but the vast majority are uh, working on our convenience or entertainment. If you really think about critical aspects of our life, so our actual physical, you have to still drive, you have to move, you need a force, you need to deliver, you need to move, you have to fabricate products essential for us. We need to eat, right? And if you think about the space on the left, if you, uh, let's say you have a fantastic app, it takes days to distribute to the world because it's this amazing network. It doesn't work like that in the physical world. There's a lot of issues, but there are, I'm, I'm going to uh, introduce why the physical world is so slow and there's so much challenges, and why we need to develop physical intelligence. That's the basically main focus of the talk, is there's a lot of issues. I want to highlight the elderly care. I can uh, think about all these aging population. The, literally, we're going to run out of uh, labor. So I'm going to talk about why uh, it's so important and then why it's so challenging. What are the mechanisms and the challenges? It's actually all in our brain. Before that, before talking about the main topic, I want to briefly introduce uh, the, our research in our lab. And of course, you have to think about mobility first to provide physical services. These are the robots I've been working on the uh, first 10 years of MIT. That's a Cheetah 2, probably the fastest robot ever built. We had to actually redesign electric motors and transmissions, everything, because um, the conventional robots are actually not designed to interact with the world. You see, they're like always oh, running, but if you think about every step, is impact. You have to deal with the impact and observe energy. And so we had to reinvent almost everything from scratch. So these are all robots developed in uh, 2014, 15, uh, before pandemic. And we show some uh, pretty incredible, this 40 kilogram machine jumping off the table, which is unprecedented. But if you think about a cat, can do this very easily. Um, <laughs> And we made a smaller version just to uh, ease of experiment. Uh, during pandemic, my students actually check out, oh, I'm, can I check out one robot and do the experiment in the home? So much safer and easier. And then it turns out that it's, uh, we don't need to redesign the software. Software can be just easily uh, exported from the small system to the big system. So we really change how we uh, uh, do experiment. This is the most recent uh, machine. <laughs> We ended up developing 10 of them in-house. Literally, these 10 robots are built in two tables, and then we distribute to the world. At this point, there are 13 mini cheetahs uh, outside at MIT, and then we're doing collaboration for research. Uh, so these are mostly locomotion, and I want you to really think about uh, what it takes to develop a robot that can balance. So uh, this is the main topic. It's very related to everything I show you, uh, but. Uh, they're also interconnected. So this, I'm going to just introduce you, like, what are the things we are actually having huge bias and we see AI technology not in a straightforward way. Number one, we judge the performance AI in human standard. I'll show you a couple of examples so that you can understand. You probably already have some experience like that. The reason why I do that is actually because we don't know what we're doing. Physically. I'll prove it to you. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Physically only. And then number one, uh, it, as a result, our language is stuck in the very high abstract level. I'll explain that. I don't have time for number four, because that's a huge another topic. It takes probably two hours to explain. So let's go. I can see that your eyes are going back and forth, but I see that all the eyes are on the left compared to the right. Right? Back flip is cool, right? Wow, that's pretty impressive. Right video? Yeah, it walks. I can tell you that took uh, undergrad uh, three days of uh, uh, work to make that happen. This one, the whole team, our whole team designed uh, two years. Your brain doesn't catch that in a short period of time if you don't know the background. I can tell you uh, briefly, 
once you take off the ground, there's nothing to do. So as long as you push right, you're done. This one, you have to constantly adapt and then adjust your force to be able to stay in balance. Our brain is not really wired to perceive that kind of level because we're judging almost everything based on human level, human standard. I can't backflip, but my son can walk around no problem. If I'm a two, three-year-old kid, can do it. Uh, uh, many quadrupedal animals can run and walk full speed about an hour after their birth. But we don't think that's actually difficult and intelligent because everything we judge based on our bias, short thinking, uh, very reflexive behavior, right, in our brain. These famous uh, researchers, Rodney Brooks is still working on the AI technology, and those three people actually talked about this a long time ago, 1988. It's comparatively easy to make computers exhibit adult-level performance on intelligence tasks. Take a look at the language they're using. Or playing checkers, but very difficult or impossible to give them a skill of one-year-old when it comes to perception or mobility. Even they were biased. They think playing checkers is intelligent behavior. Perception or cognition is not. I want you to look at this. We conquered chess world a long time ago. AlphaGo 2017, 16. Now the Alpha Zero came out, completely wiped the floor. They called it God player. Nowadays, uh, if you go to the Go game, they're checking if this person is cheating or not based on how closely you're playing close to AI or not. There's a me mechanism to check that. But Doing math, amazing. Writing, writing is such a unique human, unique capability. Now it's about to get conquered by the AI. But whereas um, peanut butter jelly sandwich, I'll grab a key from the pocket. Did anybody says that's intelligent? We have a no technology you can do this at this point. Not a single thing. Amazon is still working on picking a product from the bin. My, student, my friend is actually working on it, so I know all the details. What is intelligent? Are you guys biased? I will show you more examples. We don't have a complete understanding of what is really, what consists of really intelligent, because our brains can, our brain can, what the area brain can perceive is so limiting. I will show you more example. Number two, why? Why we're so biased? Because we don't know what we're doing. Everybody ate, enjoyed the breakfast today, right? Uh, while you're talking with you, most of you, right? We mostly talking, eating, right? Have you ever thought about, ever since you were born, eating as a process? Your upper teeth are stuck in your skull, right? Your lower teeth are one piece. You don't have individual control over your teeth, right? Nobody has the muscle to control, right? It's gross, I know that, but... <laughs> Carol comes in, your front teeth nicely chopped off, lump come in, what happened after that? It's just somehow grounded and going to your stomach, right? My molar is supposed to chop down, but molar cannot grab that in, right? What happened? Your tongue pushes back and then crump. Like your, your molars are not very smart, just crump, right? And then some pieces are big enough, I'm going to bring it uh, small enough, throw, uh, swallow, swallow. Too big, I'm going to bring back to the molar again. Think about and then, oh, find the piece of paper. Somehow you bring to your lips, as can, your hand can take out, right? Have you aware of any of these processes? Your chewing level is different depending on what you're chewing. Why are you talking with your friend? Talking about politics, economics. What do you use to talk? Use your tongue. A piece of lump in your mouth. Doing all this. Can you imagine you build a mouth as big as about two meters wide and build a robot to take, take care of the, what the tongue is doing? I don't know how many robots do I need. You have to bring it and push it back and then jump down. Oh, I have to small, throw it, big, you have to push. Your tongue is doing all this with absolutely no conscious awareness. You guys have, a, have you, anybody thought about this ever before? Oh, God, let me talk to you later. Um, <laughs> most of physical actions are living in the uh, on subconscious level. We are not aware of it. Our brains, conscious level brains are not uh, very aware of this. I'll ask you to, well, this is one of my uh, video. I actually asked my student to pick. I'm going to pick this apple. Somebody says pear. I think it's apple. I think it's pear. <laughs> and I just asked my student to take a video uh, slow motion. And then this is what happened. It crashed and then ended up pushing it. Happened to choose the worst possible choice. <laughs> that apple is so much easier to pick. Somehow my finger stumbled, uh, choose change in action. But amazingly, that happens in 0.7 seconds. 
Individual action, pretty dumb. I didn't know that my arm is that dumb. <laughs> but so reliable, if I do that a thousand times, I would probably say several thousand times. But it happened in 0.7 seconds, making judgment very quickly. And I have no idea. I have been watching this, wow. I have absolutely oblivious. I will prove it to you. Anybody in your, anything in your pocket, just grab it and bring it out to you in front of you. Like if you thought about it, probably happened and or somehow magically, like you're uh, asking some of your team leaders, anybody remember second joint of your index finger was doing? Anything? Jo joint trajectory of your second joint uh, of your index finger. Anybody remember? Did you command that? We have absolutely no idea because there's a lower level, your cerebellum probably, or your spinal cord, taking care of all these details, and our conscious level brain is pretty much like a chairman or, or a president. I don't know, like somewhere the highest, oh, make a solve conference inviting 200 people, and make it happen next week. <laughs> and you have no idea how many seats you have to bring it up here, uh, you know, how, how to contract AV and talk about detail. It's all automatic because it's hierarchically done. Our brain, I believe our brains are hierarchically done. But we are only aware of this high-level, CEO-level decision-making. And absolutely no idea what's going on in the physical world. How can we even talk about this technology as we're using human language? That brings up to the, our next topic. Our languages are very, very, very abstract. How you teach your son or uh, daughter making peanut butter jelly sandwich? What language do you use? Think about it. Grab a knife, spread the peanut butter. Spread very well. Do I use any other words? I can't use any other words, but I don't have a, I'd, I'd run out of language, right? But imagine you're teaching an alien who somehow know how to speak English, but never seen peanut butter, never seen peanut butter jelly, explaining the language is impossible. Just to look at the definition of a spread. And we just don't have enough language to describe what's going on. I'm a roboticist, I know how difficult this is in robot. I can't just specify trajectory because it might push too hard while not even touching it, right? How about specifying force? Or how about the peanut butter is hard or soft? where the, butter, the, the bread is actually can crumble. I, don't, I can't squeeze. Uh, there's so many things we have to think about, but we just done it by just showing it because we have a mirror neuron. You can look it up, mirror neuron. I don't have time to talk about this, but, but we don't have the technology. We don't have the language to describe it. I can't write a paper about our physical intelligence because I don't have a language. So we are actually working on this subsidiary, like the intermediary language to communicate our language, human language, to the robot language. Robot can only understand position, angle, forces, cannot understand uh, grasp or peeling an apple. So that's a, a, we call the sticky reflex. That's our language. I have to create a language so that I can communicate. And I actually have a demo. You can actually play with it whenever after my talk. Uh, just a challenge for you. You saw something cool today during the solve. Can you describe this to your son on the phone? How do you describe this? We can. Because our language is lack of uh, resolution, so abstract that we can describe it. So we have to create it. Another language we call that is a glide reflex. How are we going to describe this in human language? Good luck, GPT, uh, solving this problem. <laughs> Combining all these reflex, we can do something much, much better. This is still baby step. Where we've only been working on this two years. We're going to eventually do much more. Look at the uh, speed. This is the real time. It's not sped up. We can achieve like human level uh, uh, manipulation and, uh, and uh, grasping uh, uh, behavior because we can rely on this intermediary reflexes and languages so that we can actually understand what robot is doing or we can actually ask what robot to do. Societal challenge. I mean, eventually, I'm going to tackle this. Um, in Korea, South Korea, I'm, I'm from South Korea originally. Uh, uh, 2050, uh, over 40% of population will be over 65. Has same similar thing happened in Japan. China is already happening too. In US, it's relatively okay because a lot of immigration comes in, but every country, the demographic is going into very, very dangerous situation. All this IT technology, a virtual technology, can make us life more convenient, maybe, and then sometimes beyond convenience. This is must-have technology. We might have a social crisis if you don't actually tackle this growing elderly population. Language, we already have it. We can talk to my grandmother, I can help. We need to be able to provide services like this. Um, you know, if you look at uh, how much you know, delicacy it happened, happened. And I'll finish with the, this uh, quote. It's my favorite quote. I actually 
uh, showed my student to really remember. Uh, Oscar Wilde talked about imagination. Imitate, really distinguished from the creativity. Imitation is not creativity. And AI really just imitate us just from the data, really don't know how to uh, critically think about for our society. So that we keep us in mind and then think about what technology we should focus on. Thank you very much.